welcoming folks and just let them know that we'll get starting in just a few minutes. Yep, we are live. Welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. We're just gonna We're just going to we're just going to take a few minutes um, just to wait for other attendees to arrive before we get started. And so in the meantime, you can sit back, enjoy and uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you um, for everyone that's here right now. We're still just waiting uh, for just a few more uh, minutes to uh, let everyone into this webinar and we'll get started shortly. So thank you again for your patience. Okay, uh, I think uh, we are just going to get started. We're gonna, I'm gonna pass it over to our moderator here today, myself and Gabelle, to uh, just go over a few housekeeping before we get started on this webinar. So thank you everyone who has joined. Adelante, Gabriel. Oh, we can't hear you. Hi, uh, Gabriel. No, no um, yes, Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel, um, we can't hear you. Maybe if you can take your microphones, um, just so that we can hear what the uh, the housekeeping points are before we get started here. So, thank you, everyone. Can you speak, Gabriel? No, we still can't hear you. Ah, uh, okay. How about we, uh, I'll just take over here just so we can get started and then we can uh, go back to um, Gabriel with um, the information. So just uh, thank you again, everyone for your time today. It's such a pleasure to have everybody from different time zones here together in one space. Uh, before we get started, we wanna go over a bit, a few housekeeping um, points. Uh, so this is, event is being live streamed on Culture Survival's Facebook page and YouTube page. It's also being recorded, uh, so it will then be posted on 
Culture Survival's website, www.cs.org. We also have interpretation available in Spanish and English. Uh, this is only ac accessible if you are registered in our tuning in via Zoom. We will make uh, a recording in the Spanish so that we will be posting afterwards for those um, who are uh, viewing us live on Facebook or YouTube channel. Uh, in the end of the panelist um, discussion, we will have our Q&A, which will take place at the end of the presentation. And we do have the application, so please, uh, you can see at the bottom of the Zoom Q&A function where you can insert your questions throughout uh, the conversations. Along with interpretation, again, it's a globe uh, below in the bar of the Zoom. Uh, so thank you for having joining us today for Indigenous Youth Leaders Today, Elders Tomorrow webinar at this. We will have four panelists today. And uh, if you enjoyed what you learned today and what you heard today, um, please uh, donate at cs.org slash donate. Um, you can see it in the Zoom chat there that will uh, link to donate. And we will now move along to opening up the space. Uh, my name is Nati Garcia. I'm the Indigenous uh, Media Community Media Youth Fellowship Coordinator. I uh, work for Cultural Survival. Uh, I am Maya Mum from Ancestral Roots of uh, Guatemala. And uh, I currently am speaking from the territories of the Kaisan people which is in the western part of Panama. So uh, I will now pass it over to, uh, I will be one of the moderators speaking in English. Uh, we have another moderator here, my colleague, Gabriel. I'll pass it over to him to introduce himself as a moderator. Thank you. Sí, gracias. Ahora pueden escucharme. You can yes. hear me. Thank you. Eh, hola, eh, a hola a todos. Eh, mi nombre es Gabriel Soy. Eh, soy Maya Cachiquel y actualmente vivo en Guatemala. Eh, en Cultural Survival estoy como asistente de tecnologías de la información y a la vez también eh, me desempeño como asistente en el programa de medios comunitarios, apoyando a varios compañeros, entre ellos eh, en el programa de becas a Nati García. Así que es un gusto saludarles a cada uno y bienvenidos a todos. Gracias. Uh, gracias, Gabriel. Thank you. I would like to pass over the microphone to one of our panelists, Raven, uh, to please um, open up uh, the the space and just uh, get with the web, have good energies to start off the webinar. In many of our indigenous communities, uh, we usually start with an opening ceremony and offer either a prayer or song. And today, Raven uh, is is willing to offer uh, a few words for us. So. Thank you, Raven. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Raven Lassert. I'm Carrier, a member of the Lake Babine Nation um, in British Columbia, Canada. And I am so honored to be here with you all today. Um, and I'm so honored to be asked to open up the day in a good way. So when I was thinking about how I would want to do that, I was really thinking about how many different beautiful cultures and peoples there will be joining this call today and um, how beautiful it would be if we could all just take a minute together um, and plant our feet on the ground. So I'll ask all of you to please put your feet on the ground and close your eyes and Take one big deep breath together. Um, and as you're closing your eyes, I ask that you think about your ancestors. I've been thinking a lot about the people, um, my ancestors that have led me here today. And I just give them so much love and gratitude and big hugs to help to get all of us to this point today. 
Um, and so I am going to sing a song. You can keep your eyes closed. You can do whatever you feel most comfortable doing. This is um, a drum that I'll be playing on um, and it's made out of moose hide. Um, and my husband made this drum. So the song that I'm going to sing is called the Woman's Warrior Song. And when I play this song and sing it, I think about all of the women in my life um, and all of the men in my life that we are doing all of this work together and we need each other in all of this work of um, growing and being beautiful humans. And there's so much strength in our people and in our cultures. And so I'm gonna open by singing this song. Last part, I put my hand up in the air and with a fist, so you can do that if you want. Hey, 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 yeah, he, oh, yeah, he, oh, yeah, he, oh, hey, hey, yeah, he, oh. Masicho, everyone. I hope that you all have a lovely day today. Hi, thank you, Gracias. Raven. Gracias. Adelante, Gabriel. Thank Gracias, you. Eh, Raven. Uh, bien, queremos eh, contarles a todos que eh, Cultural Survival eh, viene abogando por los eh, derechos de los pueblos indígenas en el mundo apoyando su autodeterminación, apoyando sus culturas y su resiliencia política de todas las comunidades uh, o de la mayoría de comunidades indígenas en el mundo a partir de 1972. Este año precisamente celebramos nuestro 49 aniversario y 45 años de promover las voces indígenas a partir de la revista trimestral CSQ, eh, de la cual ustedes pueden ver en nuestra página eh, culturalsurvival.org también. Así que eh, queremos invitarlos para que puedan explorar también nuestra página. Y continuamos, Nati. Gracias. Wow, I'm still feeling the sensations from the, the opening song. Thank you, Raven and Gabel, for um, sharing the work uh, of uh, supporting indigenous communities and the importance um, of being able to advocate and uh, support their self-determination and uh, sovereignty. So uh, we featured this uh, month uh, for CSQ uh, on indigenous uh, youth leaders. Uh, so you can definitely see in the chat box there the links to um, view all the other articles and stories that have been featured in that CSQ. We have an uh, amazing panelist today. And before we get started, I wanted to share a little bit about um, the Indigenous Community Youth Fellowship. Uh, it's a fellowship that um, started uh, it's in its fourth cycle. It started in 2018 and our fellowship program supports young Indigenous leaders between the ages of 18 to 25 and 
who are eager to learn about technology, program development, journalism, community radio, media, and indigenous people rights advocacy. Uh, we have awarded grants to 35, 33 youth to date. Uh, so one of them, a few of them are as our panelists. Um, so moving along, uh, I will then be introducing uh, our amazing panelists. Uh, we have here four incredible youth uh, who are from different parts of the world, different corners. And as our first panelist, we have uh, Ernab Shadaki. Uh, Tharu, 21, hails from Gadwa, Gadwa village in Dang district of Nepal. Uh, currently in his third year of law school, he is fluent in Tharu. Taru, Nepali, Hindi, English, and uh, Adwahi. As a found reader of poetry and literature, he advocates for indigenous languages in Nepal. He is also a legal intern for pro-public working in the field of, of um, environmental justice. And uh, Ernab previously worked as a, also as an executive member of the Kathmandu Valley Committee of the Tauru Student Society and continues to be active in discussions of social, legal, political, and economic issues related to Indigenous communities with his peers. Uh, he received a fellowship in 2020 for a project titled Banishing Language of Kusunda Peoples. He produced um, programs focusing on promoting and strengthening uh, the critically endangered language and culture of the, of the Kusunda peoples. The program was also broadcasted on three local community uh, radio stations in Nepal. So Arnav, thank you for uh, your presence today as one of the panelists. As our second panelist, we have uh, Shari Kanel uh, Koei San, 26 years old, is an environmental activist from South Africa. She is also an environmental scientist by profession. She has an honors degree in zoology from the University of uh, Johannesburg. Shari is the director of the nonprofit organization Indigi Youth uh, Exchange Africa that promotes, that provides assistance to indigenous and marginalized communities uh, within Southern Africa. Over the past four years, uh, she has embarked on a journey in exploring her ancestral heritage in language about indigenous knowledge systems of the Koei and San people. This journey led to the creation of the Indigi Youth Ex Exchange Radio, a space to explore indigenous heritage um, and allowing a space for international uh, insight on the indigenous peoples of Southern Africa. Shari is also a Culture Survival 2021 Indigenous Community Media Youth Fellow. So Shari, thank you for joining us here today. And as our third panelist, uh, I would like to introduce Lorena Hamoy Tisoy, uh, Inga Kaminstra, uh, 23 years old, who is from Zibundo Putumayo, Colombia. She is in her final semester of studying architecture from the National University of Sed Manicelas. Lorena is passionate about the craftsmanship of her people in ambitious in creating a better way of living for indigenous women in particular. She received a fellowship in 2021 for her project entitled Weaving the Thoughts of Our Elders, which seeks which seek to strengthen the ancestral knowledge in memory of the Kamintra people. Thank you, Lorena, for your presence today as one of our panelists. And finally, but not last, um, Raven Lexert, um, uh, Thank you um, for your time today. She is a proud member of the Curry First Nations in Northern BC and belongs to the Bear Clan. Uh, she is a co-founder and national ambassador for the Moose High Campaign, which we'll be learning a little bit about, uh, which is a national groups, gra uh, grassroots efforts to end violence towards indigenous and non-indigenous women and children. The Moose High Campaign started by Raven and her father, Moss Lasser in 2011 has now grown into a national movement of all Canadians working together to end violence towards women and children. Raven is also a mother of her young daughter, Sita Bear, and loving fiance, Dominique Paul, who, who created that wonderful uh, drum that you played with us today. 
Uh, Raven and her family are hunters and practitioners of traditional indigenous cultural and ceremonial activities. So uh, thank you to these amazing panelists. Uh, we will now be opening the space so that each one of you can introduce yourselves uh, uh, aside from the bio, what's been spoken, uh, please, we'll go in the same order as we went before, uh, where your name, where you're from, and uh, what you're passionate about at this moment. Um, so, Arnav. Thank you, Nati. Uh, hello, Namaste, Ramba, my Sajak, everyone. Uh, it's me, Arnav Chaudhary, from Dang District of Nepal. I belong to Thayu community, who are one of the largest indigenous community in Nepal. Uh, population wise, as you see, currently I am studying law in Catholic School of Law of Bhaktapur and working as the legal intern in uh, Pro Public. And I am one of the central committee member of creation of indigenous nationalities, literates, and writers of Nepal, uh, and also engaged in open youth forums like Halba Gala and Step Towards Change. I'm fond of literature and discussion on various issues, especially related to the environment and marginalized section of. Our society, and as, you, as Nati has already mentioned, I am one of the fellow of Indigenous Youth Media Fellowship 2020, provided by Health and Survival. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nev. Uh, we will now uh, go allow the space for Shari to please introduce yourself and what you're working on in your community and um, what you're passionate about. Thank you so much, Nati. Um, good evening, everyone from South Africa. It's about 6 p.m. over here and it's been a great day. Um, so I'm Shari Canal and I am from the city of Johannesburg in South Africa. Um, it's very urban, hustle and bustle, um, but it's an, an amazing place. Um, I identify myself as Khoi and Khoi San. Um, we are made up of a bunch of tribes in the Khoi and San communities um, found through, throughout Southern Africa. Um, I am currently the director of IYX Africa, which is a nonprofit organization as Nati did speak about. And what we do is we focus in rural and remote assistance in marginalized communities within Southern Africa. So I am really grateful for that because we do a lot of traveling and that's a big um, you know, love of mine. And also just getting to know different cultures and different people. Um, and what we do is we teach sustainability and just concepts pertaining to self-development and self-determination. And for me, that is a big passion, uh, is self-determination and allowing, you know, ourselves to become the creators of our own reality and our own lives. So thank you. And I hope that you have a great time. Uh, thank you, Shari. Uh, we will pass it along now to uh, Lorena, if you can please introduce and present yourself to, to the group. Eh, buenos días para todos. Mi nombre es Lorena Jamiol. Eh, extenderles un cordial saludo desde acá del Valle de Segundo y Putumayo, Colombia. Eh, pues dentro de las actividades que vengo de, realizando acá en el territorio, pues eh, están relacionadas con el tejido y la chagra, la chagra que es un espacio tradicional donde se cuentan vivencias y donde eh, pues hacemos la parte de soberanía alimentaria. Eh, dentro de las pasiones que tengo eh, es ayudar, es no solo, solamente ayudar a, a fortalecer la cultura, sino también aprender de nuestros mayores y asimismo pues eh, transmitir ese conocimiento a las generaciones eh, pequeñas como son los niños y los jóvenes. Gracias. Thank you, Lorena. Uh, we will pass it now along to Raven. Uh, Hadi Raven Musert Sadni Loretta Madam Slu Polisert Spa uh, Saigana Lachshubu in Jan Yin Kaktene Keoh to base Nachalia in Jan Lakwangan Keoh. Um, so I said in my language carrier, uh, my name is Raven. Um, my mum is the late Loretta Madam and my dad is Paul Assert. Um, I'm Carrier and I'm part of the Bear Clan. And um, at the end there, I acknowledge the beautiful territory that I'm on here today um, in Victoria, BC in Canada. 
Um, and I was born and raised here and feel very lucky to be a visitor on these beautiful territories um, and just so honored and grateful to be part of this um, today and to share a little bit more about the work um, that I do with the moose hide campaign. Um, and so what it is, is just this little square of moose hide that we ask people to wear as their commitment and their everyday reminder to not do violence towards women and children in their lives and to speak out against violence if they see it happening um, and to commit to raising our young ones in a good way uh, where they know what real love looks like um, and healthy relationships and all of that. So for me, it's a lot about um, breaking the cycles of violence that have been happening in First Nations communities here in Canada. Um, the residential school experience, I'm not sure who, if anyone knows about it, but um, Indigenous peoples here in Canada have gone through a lot and through with colonization and um, my mom was one of the people that went to the residential school. She was six years old when she went. Um, and so she was forcibly removed from her home and brought to a school that was um, a church run school where the whole point is to um, take the culture and the language away from our people and make us into, um, into the civilized community. And so um, it brought a lot of pain and hurt to a lot of Indigenous peoples and the families to come after that. And so part of what I feel really passionate about is helping to break those cycles of pain and hurt and trauma and put love back into those spaces. So i um, grateful for the chance to be here today and um, love to all of you. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Raven, and thank you to all the panelists well, uh, for sharing a little bit about your passion and uh, what the work you are doing in your community. We will now pass it over to um, Gabrielle, who will take uh, will be taking lead on the discussion for today's webinar. Gracias. Sin duda. Las historias que han compartido hasta este momento son historias impresionantes. Han tenido distintas experiencias que les han nutrido, que les han dado fuerza, que hacen que sean protagonistas directos y emblemáticos de cada una de sus comunidades, por las cuales eh, les admiramos, por las cuales también valoramos todo el esfuerzo que ustedes hacen, los aprendizajes que comparten con la gente. Y ahora vamos a aprender un poco más de las experiencias que han tenido ustedes en su trayecto, en su camino. Y eh, voy a dirigir en primer lugar eh, la palabra para Arna y él ha sido un becario del año pasado en el programa de becas de Cultural Survival. Y pues nos encantaría, Arna, que puedas contarnos acerca de tu, exp tu experiencia con el proyecto de becas y la importancia que esta tuvo para fortalecer las historias, los saberes y los conocimientos de los abuelos de la comunidad. Por favor, Arna, el tiempo es para ti. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. Um, as I am one of the fellow of Indigenous Youth Medical Policy Plan Grant provided by Cultural Survival, the fellowship is one of my, in one of my name, but uh, the fellowship is part of work is done by my team. The eleven people they are my friends. I want to recite their name: uh, Arpan Sreshtha, Niradhan Sharma, Adhikari, Pratik Nepal, Vaidik Morasini, Irina Kesi, Rasmi Regni, Sandhya Vista, Jeevan Acharya, Pratcha Nepal. And uh, we collectively work a lot on our this fellowship. Uh, we all are classmates in law school. Uh, we named our team, named, which is Poinati Group, who works on this fellowship. Uh, we were in the talks with researcher Uday Ali, who is closely working on the area of Kusunda people. The Kusunda people are one of the uh, indigenous people in Nepal who are very much marginalized and in India, they have the only population of about uh, 150, 60, not more than that. And their language is in the very indigenous situation. Currently, they have only uh, only one fluent speaker, which is Kamala, uh, Kamala Kusunda, 
and on last year one of the one of the fluent speaker of kusunda language she is uh, uh, that ganimaya kusunda she died uh, and unfortunately uh, and uh, we were on talks with the uh, uday ale who is probably working on the kusunda peoples uh, field uh, and uh, he was researching on that field and we saw our interest to contribute on it how we can help him to revitalize the kusunda language and protect the kusunda peoples uh, identity and anything but we have no uh, crystal, crystal clear idea of what we can do then one day mr alice said the link of the indigenous youth media fellowship 20 uh, 20 then we thought we can do this and help on the revitalizing the, the endangered language uh, of kusunda people we plan for producing the radio program related to kusunda kusunda people one of my friends jivan achari uh, and uh, we went to dang from Kathmandu to visit the kusunda village and uh, we meet only two fluent speaker Gary Maya Kusunda and Kamala Kusunda here, and we discuss about our program with Mr. Ali and also take suggestions from our Dip Kumar Sunwar sir. He is one of our faculty in our college. He teaches us. And after that, we collaborate with one of the local community radio station, that is Radio Highway, to produce the program. And we wrote the proposal and apply it to the cultural survival. We also use the sound cloud platform to share our radio program and uh, to make sure it will reach all over the world and every people from the world can listen to that. All of the friends engage on making, uh, we all of the friends, the team of 11 people, we engage on making reports, jingle, taking interviews, and also editing the program. As we are not uh, well aware about, and we were the first time on the radio program presentation, we face a lot of problems problem, like how to, how to write the script, how to take an interview, how to edit it. We learn from the YouTube's different types of platform. And this way we, we challenge, the, we face challenge and uh, we mitigate it. And uh, we take the interview with different stakeholders of different level related to those types of uh, Kusunda people and local representatives and officials of language commissions and resources, researchers. We also do the field visit and classroom visits. Um, we all, we lost our chance for which we feel sad that we are not able to take interviews. One of the last 20 speakers of Kusunda language is Gani Maya Kusunda. We are still working on it and trying to uh, trying to help the community from our side. Uh, the cultural survival gave us a very good opportunity and help on the steps of re revitalizing the language. One of the great opportunity I got. I got is that I got the chance to spread network with indigenous youth from other parts of the world and get chance to listen to them also and their works. And uh, as we know, there are lots of knowledge and stories and uh, and history of our community, but uh, they are not documented very well. And we are not able to document, do the documentation works of our indigenous knowledge. And they are, uh, and we, we need to document them to be done. We, we new generations have been part from our community by different aspects. Uh, we are in less talks, so we are not able to get knowledge as, the, as our ancestors and older people are dying. We are losing our culture, knowledge, language. We need to preserve them. We must, the types of like making radio programs, TV presentations, like uh, writing the papers, articles, this may help to do the documentation. And one of the good Part of that is uh, this media fellowship is uh, helping on the documentation of our knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, Nab, for sharing the importance and the, the, the power of uh, media tools that can be used in, in strengthening and really just uh, being able to uh, continue the, the recovery of the endangered language of the Kusunda people. And knowing that it wasn't just you behind that project, it was also a team behind working up with that. And so thank you for sharing. Uh, we will uh, now move along over as to our second question to uh, for our panelists. Um, Shari, if you can um, please uh, share what challenges for indigenous youth in your community, like what are the challenges that you, uh, are the indigenous youth are facing in your community? Thank you so much, Nati. 
Um, so there are many challenges um, that our youth are being faced with, but there are two fundamental challenges that I've um, pointed out. And that would be first political confusion and then a loss of identity. And this thing brings about that cascade effect um, of the other social, political, and economic challenges. So I just like to give our listeners a bit of history of South Africa. Um, so as Raven was saying, for example, you know, they there's such a painful past that they've experienced with the colonizer coming in and ripping them of the culture, the language, um, et cetera, et cetera. However, South Africa and or Southern Africa as a whole has had a history, a painful history of colonizers coming in since six, about 600 years ago. Um, the first being the Dutch, the second being the British, and currently for the, about the past 50 years, we've had the Bantu African people that have colonized our you know, indigenous lands. And with that, we have literally been stripped of all of our language, all of our culture, and our customs. So currently we are living in a space where we know we are indigenous, you know, just the word indigenous, but we don't know who we are. We don't know any part of our language, any part of our customs, the food that we eat, the, the clothing that we used to wear. Um, so everything's been stripped from our psyche. Um, and, and those traumas live in us every single day. So firstly, I'd like to say, you know, the knowledge that has been passed down um, from our ancestors, from our elders, has mainly, as we've seen in indigenous communities, it's verbal uh, via storytelling, via artifacts, um, rock paintings, um, you know, that type of thing. And therefore, there has not been any formal um, archiving or recording of this um, history or knowledge. Then the colonizer came um, and they have taken our histories and they have written and recorded and archived it in their own way, you know, according to their perspective. So it's been very one-sided, very limited, and there's been a massive gap um, or a loss of a, a loss of of information. Sorry, uh, being carried over to our people. Then um, a lot of the, the the archive knowledge has not been given to us. It's not been taught to us. We've been learning Western, you know, histories, um, but they they continue to keep our um, histories within universities and museums and that type of thing in these European countries. And we don't even have, um, you know, access to it. So how do we as individuals, as indigenous peoples understand who we are? So that's where, that's where it begins. It's that political confusion as to who we are and that loss of identity. Um, and because of that, um, a lot of the indigenous youth of South Africa, um, sorry, I'm just trying to look at my notes here, have, you know, sorry, they've started moving into spaces of substance abuse, gangsterism, unemployment, poverty, and just a lack of education of self. And yeah, so for me, I'd say that that is the two fundamental challenges being faced by South African youth, um, political confusion and a loss of identity. Thank you. Gracias, Sherry. Eh, realmente escuchar estos desafíos que tienen ustedes como jóvenes me lleva a pensar también que no solo en tu contexto, en tu comunidad o en tu, en tu pueblo, se viven estos desafíos, es más, creo que son desafíos que podríamos decir experimentamos a nivel global en todas las comunidades indígenas en el mundo. Ahora, me llama mucho la atención lo que, lo que tú mencionas y es que hay una confusión política y junto con ello hay una pérdida de identidad que trae repercusiones económicas según lo que has, eh, que has mencionado. Por otro lado, también... Eh, has mencionado esta colonización y el despojo de las culturas y las costumbres que hace perder eh, los conocimientos y los saberes eh, que vienen transmitiendo los abuelos y que tampoco hay una documentación o registro de estos saberes. Y por otro lado, que los, 
medios y la academia han registrado estos saberes a su propio modo, a, a, su, propia, a su propia perspectiva. Y junto con ello, has mencionado también que la pobreza y la marginación han sido factores que han influido en tu comunidad. Y por ello, eh, digamos, tomando todos estos puntos, eh, quisiéramos preguntar en este apartado a Lorena eh, sobre una cuestión muy importante derivado de lo que Shari ha compartido, y es en cómo el trabajo en tu comunidad, Lorena, eh, el trabajo que estás realizando puede influir en la cultura y en la identidad indígena de los jóvenes en un futuro cercano y en un futuro de largo plazo. Por favor, Lorena, el tiempo es para ti. Hello. Uh, eh, gracias. gracias. Lorena, eh, lo siento. Pues, la influencia que tiene, pues, no solo las actividades. Ah, lo siento, Nati. Ah, sí, es que eh, queremos saber si la interpretación puede uh, estar bien. Can we just confirm if interpretation is able to hear what's been translated? Okay, it's good now? All right. Adelante, Lorena, lo siento. Gracias. Por, fa por favor, Lorena, disculpas. Gracias. Eh, bueno, eh, yo creo que más que influir eh, a un futuro es como crear las bases, que se están creando las bases y los pilares para esa transformación pues que, que uno quiere hacer en las comunidades. Bueno, eh, respecto a, las, a, los, a lo que se ve, viene adelantando de fortalecimiento de identidad cultural, se hace la base en los niños y sobre todo porque estos van, estos son los, es el futuro del, del mañana. Los niños son la base, ellos son, a ellos nos debemos enfocar porque ellos van a ser la juventud y luego van a ser nuestros ancestros. Y esa base es la que nosotros a través de varios procesos, no solo con, con el proceso que vengo desarrollando, sino también eh, con, desde la casa, desde el hogar, eh, inculcarle esa base de fortalecimiento de identidad cultural, de, de amor a la madre tierra, eh, de identificarse como indígena, de identificarse como ser kamsha, como ser inga, y de ahí su, pues partir para la lengua, para rescatar la lengua, para eh, rescatar los tejidos y sobre todo tener en cuenta la historia. La historia es muy importante dentro de estos procesos porque esta es nuestra base, esto ha sido transmitido de generación, de generación y esto ha permitido que se creen las bases. Además, eh, creo que a un futuro mayor, eh, si uno crea esas bases sólidas en los niños, a un futuro cercano y, nos, y también mayor, va a crear que esto no se pierda, que esta es la relación que hay entre nuestros ancestros, se siga, se continúe y, y de esta forma pues eh, los jóvenes eh, sigan transmitiendo este conocimiento. Gracias. Gracias Lorena, me parece muy muy importante eh, es muy valorativo lo que tú nos has compartido en esta oportunidad y pues no quisiera dejar escapar algunas cuestiones importantes que nos has mencionado y es que eh, para que el trabajo que se hace pueda influir, el trabajo actual pueda influir en la cultura del futuro, en el, en la, en el futuro de las comunidades, es importante, has mencionado, eh, sentar los pilares y pilares que sean sólidos para que pueda haber una transformación en la comunidad y tú has mencionado que el fortalecimiento de la identidad cultural en los niños es sumamente trascendental es fundamental por otro lado lo que has mencionado, el amor con la madre tierra y la autoidentificación son cuestiones que también son un desafío ahora. Por otro lado, el rescate de la lengua, el uso de la indumentaria y, por supuesto, tomar en cuenta nuestras historias como pueblos, porque en muchas ocasiones eh, las historias de nuestras comunidades, de nuestros pueblos, las historias de nuestros antepasados eh, son eh, minorizadas, eh, son dejadas a un lado y no conocemos eh, eh, nuestras raíces. Y por un lado se dice quien no conoce su historia está condenado a repetirla. Y acá viene una pregunta muy interesante para Raven, y es que ahora lo que han mencionado tanto eh, Arna, Shari, y lo que ha mencionado Lorena también, eh, viene a sumarse o viene a conjugarse como una responsabilidad de los jóvenes. Entonces, para ti, Shari, la pregunta es si esta es una responsabilidad de los jóvenes en sostener 
la cosmovisión, cómo debemos de recibir estos desafíos y ser portadores de los conocimientos, eh, de los saberes que eh, nos están transmitiendo nuestros mayores, tomando en cuenta que la, transcultura, eh, la transculturación amenaza nuestra identidad como jóvenes indígenas, amenaza nuestra identidad como niños indígenas, amenaza nuestra identidad como colectivo indígena. Entonces, para ti, ¿cuáles serían eh, eh, estos, eh, estos, estos retos de ser portadores de estos, de estos saberes? Por favor, Reiden. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to all of the panelists for sharing. Um, for me, as an indigenous person here in Canada, I always feel such a huge responsibility to my um, my baby, my daughter, Cedar, um, to be able to have as much knowledge of my culture and our teachings as I can so that I can pass those on to her and help her um, in learn and grow in her culture and love her culture. And so um, for our people, we think of the past seven generations and the future seven generations. Um, and so when we do things um, here, we think about how it will affect the next seven generations to come. And so um, it's the way to connect all of our ancestors, those who have come before us and those who will come after us. And so um, for me, I am doing my language. I'm learning my language right now and practicing my culture and trying to um, create as many opportunities as I can to keep our culture going and our language. So my husband is from the territory here. This is where his people are from and we're right by the ocean. And so um, now we spend a lot of time at the ocean for my daughter and um, doing that cultural work and creating those opportunities where I didn't have those opportunities growing up. Um, learning my language was not something that I was allowed to do or, or encouraged to do because when my mom went to residential school, she was not allowed to speak her language. And so when she had us, she didn't like to speak it very much. Um, and so I didn't have very many opportunities to learn my language. Um, and so now I am in my own language classes and doing my best to learn and to be able to pass that on so that um, for, for my culture, care for carrier people, that the language keeps going and the culture keeps going. And so um, as a young person working really hard to do that is sometimes um, hard, but just so important. Um, and so I do it with as much love as I can and I'm just doing my best. I think that we're all just doing the best that we can. And I think that's the most important part. Gracias. Gracias, Raven. Sin duda alguna, eh, la globalización y el fenómeno de encuentro de distintas culturas también hace que en algún momento eh, algunas personas nos inclinemos más hacia ciertos gustos, hacia ciertas costumbres o hacia ciertas, de, ciertas tradiciones de grupos eh, mayoritarios y hace también que en algún momento olvidemos eh, nuestras raíces, por ejemplo, en relación a la música, en relación a nuestra indumentaria. Y algo muy interesante que mencionaba eh, Raven es que eh, sus seres queridos fueron limitados a expresar su identidad y también esta es una cuestión que no únicamente ha, ha pasado en la comunidad de Raven, sino que también creo que en los pueblos indígenas alrededor del mundo 
han sido vulnerados en cuanto a sus derechos, han sido limitados y restringidos para demostrar, para expresar sus saberes, sus conocimientos, sus prácticas, su idioma, y en consecuencia, eh, esto ha hecho que los jóvenes ahora tengamos muchísimos, muchísimos desafíos. Ahora bien, quisiéramos pasar a una ronda de preguntas relacionada con todos estos puntos que hemos mencionado, y... Esta pregunta vamos a comenzarla con, con Arnab para que él pueda darnos eh, sus puntos de vista y sus opiniones en relación a eh, qué considera Arnab que, y, y todos nosotros acá como panelistas y como participantes, qué consideramos que se debe dar a conocer, eh, también fortalecer y rescatar en medio de todas nuestras relaciones sociales eh, como pueblos indígenas. Entonces, el tiempo es para ti, Arna, y seguidamente vamos a continuar eh, con la, eh, en, en, en esta misma eh, orden de, de, de respuestas. Vamos a continuar con Shari, y luego con Lorena y por último con Raven. Voy a repetir eh, la pregunta para que nos quede claro y que por favor eh, podamos eh, opinar respecto a qué consideramos que debemos dar a conocer, fortalecer y rescatar en medio de nuestras relaciones sociales como pueblos indígenas. Por favor, Arna, el tiempo es para ti. Thank you, Jared. Uh, as we all know, indigenous people have their own language, culture, tradition, and they have their own types of ways to maintain the social relationship uh, in their society. In our Tharu community, uh, there is still we have a barter system in different ways like we share foods in, with our neighborhoods and our, like different types of ways we still uh, use the barter system and we have own leadership system in our community we choose our leader we choose our uh, we divide our works in our community how to do it. in present context we are sharing our community with other community also due to the migration due to the migration from the, the hillside, the people migrated to the, our place and we are sharing our community. And uh, due to which, but in present situation, our indigenous community is also facing the discrimination and the casteism. Due to the uh, echo thought by the Hindu system, we are also in the hierarchy of caste system also. We can maintain our social relationship by respecting others, making, uh, making others respect our cultures and on, understand with, uh, and understand them with our open arm uh, in our indigenous community there are many knowledges like knowledge of knowledge of organic agriculture and preserving the environment protecting life from the natural disasters we have a tradition uh, related to the medication system or herbal knowledge we have our own fooding and culinary art system we can make them to taste it to the other other people from the other culture. And we indigenous people have lots of beautiful things which we, we can attract other people, but those beautiful things are on the phase of extinction due to the uh, so-called modernization. We have to preserve them, but in our community, there are lots of taboos and social ideas also, which we have to eradicate collectively uh, which, uh, by maintaining relationship with other people. Is the issue related to the environmental protection and the preservation of modern arts and sustainable development can be done only by the way in the indigenous knowledge, by the way of the indigenous knowledge. In every, in the all over the world, people are uh, saying that indigenous knowledge is the only way to uh, mitigate related to environmental issues and uh, sustainable developments, such types. Of, it may help us to uh, uh, make our strong presence in the international and national arena. This way we can maintain our social uh, social relationship with other peoples among the indigenous people also. Thank you. Por favor, gracias Arna. Por favor, Shari. Please. Okay, thank you. So what I think needs to be made known is Talking from South African context, though, um, is our origin and the understanding of where we come from. Um, so for us, we need to know who we are. And then I think that a fair exchange needs to be made between like the colonizer and leadership on our side about why and how come 
um, our indigenous peers and our, our leadership was never consulted about our education. Um, in yet a large amount of indigenous knowledge has been given to universities, as I said, and other institutions. Um, for example, um, present day or currently we are dealing with the Namibian genocide and how you know Germany has taken um, human remains, artifacts, and that type of thing, and, and is keeping it there. And um, for example, um, this will lead to a greater understanding of ourselves if we can get our artifacts, our items and our remains back, it will allow for us to become more, um, you know, have a greater understanding of ourselves. What I believe can be strengthened within indigenous communities and that in South Africa is that we need um, to internally strengthen our community relations and communications because in South Africa, we are very separated. There's a lot of separation and division uh, amongst leadership and you know, to, uh, tribes. So I think that that could um, really strengthen our bond and also to increase communications between other indigenous communities outside of Africa um, that would ultimately lead to the unification of indigenous rights worldwide. Um, because I mean, we all share a common colonial master um, and yeah, I definitely think that um, that would be amazing. And then to, in, in terms of rescuing, what, how we can rescue solutions, possible solutions forward, um, this will entail indigenous peoples becoming completely independent of the Western uh, system, um, allowing us to reclaim our knowledge to stand in our practices and in our customers, customs, as for example, Raven explained, she is daily, um, she's um, practicing her customs and that type of thing, which a lot of us do not have the chance to do. Um, this will allow us to heal our current traumas, um, indigenous struggles and other um, ambitions. Um, and it is not just that we uh, would like our land or our languages back, but we want our identity and the ability to practice self-determination. I think that's a very important solution moving forward. And finally, um, within South Africa, um, we need to rescue our indigenous youth from corrupt leadership uh, that, is in, that is very biased um, and politically, in, in playing in the political sphere. And um, they are actually causing our marginalized communities to become further separated and further mar marginalized. So I think by separating indigenous youth and um, what's the word, novel ideas and perspectives from old school ideas and perspectives that can bring about a, a different solution. Thank you. Y podemos continuar en esa misma línea de respuestas en base a la pregunta que tuvimos con Lorena. Por favor, Lorena, adelante. Eh, gracias, Gabriel. Pues eh, yo considero eh, que dentro del contexto de acá, del Valle de Segundo y de los pueblos Kamsa e Ingas asentados acá en Putumayo, creo que lo que se debe dar a conocer, fortalecer y rescatar pues en medio de las diferentes re relaciones sociales, primero pues es el autoconocimiento, como lo habíamos mencionado anteriormente. Es importante autorreconocerse como, eh, como ser indígena y también como eh, eh, ser kamsa, ser inga, y asimismo pues de esta forma eh, poder lograr el fortalecimiento cultural eh, en la apropiación eh, y así garantizar pues... Eh, y salvaguardar toda nuestra cultura, nuestros usos y costumbres, y de esta forma eh, transmitir ese aprendizaje, esa enseñanza a los más pequeños. Eh, creo también eh, que un, algo muy importante es nuestra propia soberanía alimentaria, que se logra o se puede lograr eh, es en el fortalecimiento de la chagra. La chagra es un espacio... Eh, este es un espacio donde se comparten las experiencias, donde se siembra, donde se trabaja eh, de forma colectiva y pues es un espacio fundamental y 
de la relación con el territorio de la madre tierra y de nuestra propia identidad que nos dan las bases eh, como seres eh, indígenas eh, de acá de, del Valle de Sibundoy y, nos, pues, y de esta forma pues eh, nos permite también hacer el trueque, eh, el intercambio de alimentos con, otras, eh, con otros pueblos indígenas, con otras comunidades y así de esta forma se logra pues eh, una participación eh, de todos los de todos los miembros de la comunidad y de también se logra eh, influir en otros pueblos indígenas eh, a esa soberanía, a, ese, a, a promover también el aprendizaje para los, para los más pequeños y desde, y desde ahí, desde, la, desde ese espacio tradicional que es la chagra, podemos fortalecer también la comida, ese espacio en el Xinjiang, el Xinjiang es un espacio donde se cuentan las experiencias donde se habla, donde la palabra es el centro, el Xinjiang es ese espacio eh, donde está el fuego, donde, está, donde se cocinan los alimentos, donde se, donde se promueve la lengua, el aprendizaje de la lengua, se cuentan las historias y esto hace que eh, de una u otra forma aprendamos del territorio, eh, donde educamos a los más pequeños, donde generamos esa protección o donde generamos pues, esos pensamientos ancestrales y le damos importancia a nuestros mayores, le damos importancia al territorio, importancia a los espíritus mayores, al cosmos y de esta forma también... Eh, podemos lograr ese cambio que creemos para conservar lo propio, para mantenerlo vivo, para que este pensamiento eh, ancestral eh, nos apoderemos de eso y, podrá, y, poder, y, poder, y poder así perdón, lograr el progreso y el desarrollo eh, del legado que nos han dejado nuestros mayores para poder eh, generar esa conservación y fortalecimiento de la identidad cultural. Eh, gracias. Bueno, y ahora pasamos con Raiden también para que nos dé algunas opiniones respecto de una pregunta que venimos tratando. Gracias, Raiden. Mm -hmm, thank you. Yeah, so I think that I, I really think about my own experience um, as a First Nations person here in Canada and the work that I do with the Moosehide campaign. Um, and so I really am thinking about Canada is a very like multicultural country. There are lots of um, people from different backgrounds that live here. And so one of the things that's really important for me is teaching all of the people that live in Canada about the Indigenous people's history. Lots of um, up until very recently, we didn't learn about um, it, like the Indigenous history here in Canada in schools. And what we did learn was very different than the reality of so many experiences of the First Nations people here in Canada. And so um, what I've been noticing a lot is that people say, um, I've lived here my whole life and I didn't know what was going on for First Nations people in Canada. Um, I didn't know the history and I didn't know um, what was happening, it's very like separated. And so um, for us, it's really important to help share that history um, so that everyone can understand what happened to the First Nations people here in Canada. Um, and then in the Moosehide campaign, what we do is have a ceremony and we invite all Canadians, all men and all women and all people um, along the gender continuum um, to come together in a ceremony where we don't eat or drink anything for one day, um, a fast. And it's a ceremony that um, my people have done. And, and we invite everyone to come together and do an Indigenous innovation for the benefit of all Canadians is what we say. And we bring non-Indigenous people into a space with Indigenous people so that they can learn and be part of a ceremony and to have those experiences and feel in their heart and in their spirit about the ceremony and the history, um, especially about the violence that happens towards women and children in this country, especially the indigenous women in this country. 
Um, and so really just trying to create those spaces and those opportunities for us to come together as human beings to learn about each other and to learn about our lived experiences um, and learn together how we can create a country where we know about the Indigenous history of our country that we live in and we know about our relationship with Mother Earth and with our ceremonies and how we can live in unity and um, in mutual respect and understanding of each other and of our beautiful Mother Earth that we're living on and how we can help to um, save her. And we think of our Mother Earth as um, so beautiful and has so much to give and to hold and to carry with us. And um, so doing that is really important for us, creating those spaces to come together and talk and to create spaces to learn about our language and our culture. Um, for us at Carrier People, we, were, um, we are a very matrilineal um, people. So um, for me, I'm part of the Bear Clan and I get that clan from my mom and Cedar gets that from me. And so we passed down through our matriarchal societies and somewhere along the way that got lost and we live in a very patriarchal society. And so trying to help make that shift back to holding up our loved ones, our women in a good way. Um, and I'll just end by sharing a picture of my daughter. Um, there she is there, that's my little Cedar. Um, her name is Cedar Bear, and she is the light of my life, and I bring her into all of my meetings um, and all of my presentations, and I, she is the reason why I do this work, um, and I just have so much love for her and all of the young precious ones, so um, thank you for letting me share. Gracias. In reality, eh las apreciaciones que cada, un de, cada uno de ustedes ha tenido eh, concuerdan en algo muy interesante. En, en dos cuestiones son las que yo he logrado resumir así de una forma inmediata. Primero es la autoidentificación, el autorreconocerse, ¿no? descubrir la raíz de uno mismo. Y lo segundo también es, es que debemos devolver a la madre tierra, no solo en cuidarla, sino que también en recuperar los espacios que hemos perdido en recuperarla de lo que la hemos degradado. Y eso es lo que algo eh, en lo que los cuatro concuerdan. Ahora bien, estamos llegando al término de nuestras preguntas y vamos a participar todos también en esta, en esta pregunta eh, respondiendo en cómo ven ustedes la identidad y participación de los líderes, hombres y mujeres, en las comunidades indígenas en los próximos años, y hablemos en el ámbito político, hablemoslo en el ámbito económico, siendo estos eh, ámbitos o siendo estos espacios, estos campos en donde hay mayor incidencia social. Eh, sin, duda, uh, sin duda alguna, el ámbito político y el ámbito económico son los que determinan muchas veces las realidades de nuestras comunidades indígenas. Y por ello, eh, repito la pregunta, ¿cómo ven ustedes la identidad indígena? Ya hablamos de la necesidad de la autoidentificación y, y también ahora vamos a platicar sobre eh, cómo ustedes lo ven a futuro y cuál es la participación de los líderes, mujeres y hombres de cada una de sus comunidades en los años inmediatos, tanto en el ámbito político y en el ámbito económico. Así es que vamos a comenzar esta ronda de respuestas eh, contigo, Arnold, para que nos des a conocer cómo se mueven los líderes, hombres y mujeres, en tu contexto. Así el tiempo es para ti, Arnold. Gracias. En este contexto, como sabemos, el movimiento de las personas indígenas es realmente un movimiento de As you know, the movement of indigenous people is related to the movement for identity uh, and uh, right on the natural resources and their shelter and the representation on the mainstream in the state of every sector of the state. And we are facing the problem of loss of identity in present context, as you know. We indigenous people in Nepal are much more backward in terms of 
like economy like cash economy you know the money and uh, in nepal and we have very much uh, low representation in the bureaucracy and the state also in like the uh, we have the very low representatives uh, and uh, politics also we are not able to make our strong stand in policy making like we are not um, giving our ideas our ideas are not represented in policies laws of the nepal in present context like in the state system it is not able to address the indigenous system the indigenous knowledge are not used and uh, in the present still the state is not promoting the indigenous knowledge to convert it into the uh, making into the economic generation works and how we can generate the economy from the indigenous knowledge is still, still uh, not focusing on it like the uh, like we have the knowledge that is the medicinal hops the making of the objects like in Tharu we make handicraft like dakia and we have own fishing ways and we have own ways of agriculture still government is not able to promote it we can make indigenous people strong economically by making them able to change such types of indigenous knowledge and such type of indigenous uh, handicraft system such types of um, uh, ideas into the economic generation method the political presence is ensured by reservation system in nepal uh, the indigenous people have got the reservation uh, by the reservation system in nepal but the representation is not strong uh, and not satisfactory. The representation is much more based on the tokenism um, than the real representation. Like the in the front uh, front line of the politics, the uh, leaders are from the different community, not means outside the indigenous community, and they choose the uh, leaders from the indigenous community, such such people from the indigenous community, which. Who, who can work not on the favor of indigenous, but on the favor of bad people. So there is not uh, real representation of uh, indigenous people in the state. The political leaders who are from indigenous people are not able to show the strong rep presence in the state and policy making related to the, and maintaining the indigenous issues. And due to which the indigenous issues are not addressed very much in policy, and laws. Still, uh, Nepal is much more guided by the Brahminical ideas, and the leaders in the front line of state in Nepal are guided by such ideas. They do not know about the sentiment of indigenous people. That's why knowingly or unknowingly, they bring policies and laws which directly or indirectly harm the indigenous people. Like in the name of development, they destroy the uh, indigenous people's monument, cultural heritage, which, without doing impact assessment related to the indigenous people, how much impact it may create to the indigenous people, they don't do such types of assessment. And uh, they also do the uh, changing the name of the places, they are changing the indigenous places name in, uh, according to their uh, ways and displacing the indigenous people from the, oh, their original habitat, like make, uh, while making the na national park, they displace people from one place to another. And this way they are harming the indigenous community, not promoting the indigenous language and culture. Still, uh, our government, our constitution, uh, say that there should be the uh, education system in the uh, own language, the indigenous people community can, but the government is not playing good role on promoting the indigenous language uh, on the education system. They are not able to still, still we are, we have to uh, read and speak in, in the uh, government sector, in the official language, uh, still we are uh, we are using the Nepali language, the, uh, it's, but we are not able to use our indigenous own language. People are understanding that indigenous knowledge is very much important in present context. If you see, people are understanding that from the, uh, from the indigenous community also and outside the community also. The people are understanding that indigenous knowledge is very much important for the sustain, sustainability. Uh, now they are understanding and new generation is keen about knowing it so that the indigenous knowledge have a lots of scope. I, I think it may help the future leaders for an indigenous community if they make if they are able to make the strong uh, enough to stand and share ideas in front of the state. We are uh, in the present context, we are still struggling to make our real representation uh, and we have to work a lot to make our strong representative representation. 
I believe yeah. the political representation and economic uh, stability much more for the Indian people to be strong in every aspect to promote our knowledge, to promote and preserve the indigenous culture and traditions. Yes, thank you. Gracias, Arna. Uh, al escucharte, Arna, no puedo dejar de pensar en mi país. No puedo dejar de pensar en Guatemala, que son ya problemas similares, ¿no? la falta de representación. No obstante, eh, vamos a seguir escuchando a los demás panelistas en relación a esta pregunta. Y quisiera pedirles, eh, si, no, si fuéramos eh, más concretos y no extendernos eh, mucho en las respuestas a esta última pregunta, que sí es muy interesante, por supuesto, y que nos podemos extender aún mucho más, que es muy... Eh, muy nutrido la, las respuestas no obstante nuestro tiempo es limitado y quisiéramos pedirles ahora a Shari para que comparta con nosotros eh, sus percepciones acerca de esta última pregunta thank you Shari thank you so much um, I'll be very brief um, firstly within a South African context uh, we are in a dire situation when it comes to leadership where indigenous community leaders are replaced with so called political indigenous leaders Um, and they don't even know, you know, who we are as communities. Yet it is determined under, under a banner of Khoi and San, um, amended laws, policies, and regulations are put into place, um, and they are not fit to govern indigenous communities. Um, these leaders do so selfishly for a mere government stipend, and they exclude the community and their struggles Um, that could be assisted with financial assistance. Econ economically, our identity as in, um, indigenous peoples has become a fundraiser for non-indigenous communities and leaders, ultimately to gain more votes and political strength. The very same strength and powers that these leaders use are adopted from colonial slave masters and their systematics, which causes us to fail as indigenous communities because we are resistant to developing. Why? Because the way that they are governing us is not in alignment with our, you know, our natural flow as indigenous peoples. So what I believe is the only way um, for political and economic development as indigenous peoples within South Africa is to place ourselves as indigenous youth that are knowledgeable about Um, these types of um, aspects, such as your political and your uh, social, and um, allow these youth to bring about a greater positive social impact. Um, what I want to say, and I'm going to be very straightforward and honest about this, is that we don't, yes, we are living in a Western world and a Western civilization, but do we want to play in the arena? Do we want Do we want them to have the power over you know, who we are? Or do we want to determine something for ourselves? And I think as indigenous peoples from around the world, we are so strong and we can stand together, together and unify and you know, determine something that is in alignment with us as indigenous peoples. So thank you so much. Gracias a ti, Shari. Ahora continuamos con Lorena. Adelante, Lorena. Eh, gracias, Gabriel. Bueno, pues eh, yo creo que la influencia, la influencia, pues la participación de los líderes indígenas, eh, pues en el ámbito tanto político como económico, pues ha sido muy difícil acá en el territorio. Pero no obstante, últimamente con lo que viene pasando y la situación del país, se ha, vi se ha vivenciado pues esa lucha constante que hoy lideran muchos de los jóvenes que de acuerdo al pensamiento joven y a las vivencias dentro de los mismos territorios, eh, la lucha que se quiere lograr y los cambios que se quieren generar ha sido por parte de los jóvenes, por parte de, las, de, por parte de estos jóvenes que quieren lograr un cambio. Y de esta forma eh, pues se ha logrado eh, ver esa participación esa visualización que quieren esos jóvenes y que asimismo eh, que se quiere resaltar todo lo que tiene que ver en la parte cultural, todo lo que se quiere generar en el cambio, pues generar un cambio donde se visibilice que nosotros eh, los pueblos indígenas hemos sido dejados de lado y que hoy 
estamos a tiempo para cambiar, para lograr ese cambio eh, donde los pueblos indígenas sean reconocidos, sean autónomos y que nuestro go gobierno propio se visibilice de una forma mayor, que nos den esa capacidad de autorreconocernos, de autosustentarnos y que no nos, toca de, no nos toque depender de un gobierno eh, colonial, de un gobierno que sus intereses son otros y que nuestros intereses son otros. Entonces eh, buscamos que nosotros seamos reconocidos de forma autónoma y que ese papel que tienen los jóvenes hoy eh, se, influen, pues, se va influenciando mucho para lograr un gran cambio. Gracias. Gracias, Lorena. Y finalizamos contigo, Raven. Thank you. Yeah, I think that I also really believe in our youth. Um, and I think that there is so much change happening within our communities here in Canada. Um, there are also for Indigenous peoples in Canada, there are so many, there are 634 different nations. Um, of Indigenous peoples in Canada, and they're all very different. Um, we all have different languages and cultures and beliefs, and so um, it's all very different, even for the First Nations here in Canada. So I really think about my own culture and my own ideas, and so um, I think that putting a lot of our love into our young people is gonna help make a lot of change for our communities. I think that there are still so much pain um, and hurt in our communities that we need to um, help our young ones to, um, not hurt in their hearts anymore. And so that we give those opportunities and create those opportunities for our young people to thrive um, where like culture and love and our love for the land is at the center of it um, and that the decisions and the way that we move forward is a way based around love and each other so um thank you very much i'll keep my my quest or my brief <laughs> gracias muchas gracias gracias a cada uno de ustedes por por este espacio en donde tuvimos muchísimos aprendizajes y quisiera dejar el tiempo a mi compañera Nati, que también aún tenemos un segmento para compartir con ustedes. Gracias. Adelante, Nati. I uh, thank you, uh, each and every one of you. My heart is filled with so much love, inspiration, hearing um, the work that you're doing and uh, just like the impact you're having for generations to come and for our attendees for being able to listen to this amazing um uh voices of our our leaders today and elders tomorrow so i would like to open the space we do have a few minutes uh to answer a few questions i know there was a few questions here in our in the chat and also two questions that kind of co-relate um from fernanda and mariana who asked the question of um they'd like to hear a little bit more on your perception or comments on in international solidarity. What are the do's, what are the no, the don't do's in, um, in having an allyship with non-Indigenous peoples uh, and movements? Um, if we can perhaps uh, maybe get one or two to respond to that question, raise your hand as a panelist if you would like to respond to this question and keeping it to two minutes and then we'll open up the space just one last time to see if there are additional comments or uh, questions in the audience. Si puedes eh, repetir nuevamente la pregunta, Nati, o hacerlo más concreto para que también puedan... The question is how... Asimilar. Hi, uh, the question is uh, how to be a, an ally uh, for indigenous communities and movements uh, and what would be the do's and don'ts? I can, I can jump in. Um, I think speaking from my own experience um, in 
Canada. Um, I really encourage people to do as much learning as they can about the territories that they are on um, and the history of the people's territory that live there that have lived there for time and memorial and so um, for us here in Canada we have a lot of different um, like things to read so we have um, the truth and reconciliation commissions 94 calls to action and the um, murdered and missing indigenous women's inquiry the 90 the 231 calls for justice um, and I think that there are so many different ways that you can learn. And I think that I myself create those spaces um, for my non-Indigenous allies to come and ask me questions about whatever they want. I'm the person that they can go to if they feel uncomfortable to ask a question or they don't know how to ask it. Um, I, I try to make myself a person that can help to answer those questions or help guide people into the way where to look for the answers. And um, so I think it's really important to go and just do some research and go and meet with the people that you're curious about and ask how to be an ally in that space in a good way. If you come with a good heart and good intention, I think that goes a long way. Thank you, Raven. Uh, yes, that resonates a lot in really being able to ask and being able to acknowledge as well the presence in the movements and resistance of Indigenous peoples. Uh, we're going, we do have another question here, uh, just to give enough time, maybe we'll get another panelist to an answer this um, next question from Antonio Hernandez. Um, it is in Spanish. I will read it first in Spanish and then translate. Uh, ¿Cuál será la preocupación principal de las juventudes? ¿Qué tipo de proyectos o movimientos o ejes temáticos deberán de fortalecerse en las comunidades? Um, I'm not sure if any of the panelists here would like to answer that question, maybe one out of the four. Lorena, adelante. Sí, gracias, Nancy. Eh, pues respecto a la pregunta eh, de Antonio, eh, pues eh, dentro de los procesos que vengo desarrollando en el territorio y en mi comunidad, pues la preocupación principal de, de la, pre, la preocupación principal eh, de los jóvenes ha sido ese fortalecimiento y ha sido ese auto, autorreconocimiento. Entonces diría yo... Eh, lo que lo que lo principal lo que se debe fortalecer principalmente es la es la tradición oral que no solo representa el lenguaje o, o la lengua sino también esa historia que hay tras eh, tras esa tras la lengua tras la historia entonces es necesario reconocernos eh, fortalecer el, la lengua y fortalecer la historia para que así podamos eh, lograr eh, a través de proyectos, a través de foros, a través de charlas, de diálogos, eh, lograr un cambio. Gracias. Gracias, Lorena. Thank you. Oh, Sherry, okay. Are we do uh, short for time, so... Yes, definitely. Yes, of course. Sure, I'll be brief. Um, I'd just like to say, yes, education is a vital, you know, step forward. It's a vital key, you know, to our future um, youth. But I'd like to say that there's not only one way um, of, of learning. And I think that in our society, there's just been a very um, academically pushed um, way of learning. We should look into alternative ways of learning. Um, for example, different trades, working with your hands, being creative, you know, exploring those aspects of um, one's as a youth. And I think that um, is really important in youth development, that is not just one way to success, but whatever you are as a unique individual needs to be embraced. And I think that's really important, something really important that should be taken into consideration within our societies. Thank you. 
Gracias a ti, Shari. Ch chicos, eh, queremos agradecerles de verdad este tiempo que han apartado para compartir cada una de sus experiencias. Hemos escuchado que la autoidentificación, la autoidentidad, son pilares fundamentales para seguir fortaleciendo nuestras comunidades indígenas. Por otro lado, también hemos escuchado que el volver a la madre tierra también es importante, buscar el, la soberanía alimentaria, buscar el autogobierno, la autonomía, la autodeterminación de cada una de las comunidades hará que en un futuro inmediato los jóvenes de ahora seamos esa fuerza, seamos los sabios que, que podamos sostener y podamos tener en nuestros hombros la identidad de cada uno de nuestros pueblos indígenas que con su diversidad, que con su colorido, que con su brío han hecho de este mundo un lugar de cuidado porque ha descansado en los hombros de las comunidades indígenas principalmente en la protección de la madre tierra y de todos los bienes que nos rodean. Así que, así es que queremos agradecerles por estar acá y le cedo el espacio a mi compañera Luis. Thank you. Um, yes, again, on those words, I, I would just like to invite all of the attendees as we're coming to a close here and passing it over to Lorena to give a closing words just before then, to please, I invite you to insert words that uh, you are feeling, how you're feeling today um, from this discussion that, um, that we've had so far. And also, if you really like to learn more and want to support these Indigenous voices, um, please um, check out Culture Survival's web website, um, donate to www.cs.org slash donate. Uh, it will be entered in the document here in the chat. And um, please, I encourage you to invite, uh, if you can please write a word or an emotion that you're feeling uh, at this moment as we then um, give the space to uh, Lorena to offer a closing um, ceremony for us. Adelante, Lorena. Eh, gracias, Nati. Eh, bueno, les iba a compartir un poema de un autor eh, muy reconocido acá en la comunidad, pero ayer en una conversación con mi primo hermano José Muyoy, hoy les voy a compartir una reflexión eh, que ayer hablando un poquito de epistemolo eh, perdón, epistemología andina del, del mejor vivir. Eh, pues estábamos hablando un poquito de eso y creo que quería invitarlos a primero agradecer al, a la gran espíritu, a los espíritus mayores y a la madre tierra eh, sobre nuestro existir y de ahí partir a, a reconocernos todos independientemente del lugar que vengamos, del lugar donde estemos, a reconocernos todos como hermanos de sangre. ¿Por qué como hermanos de sangre? Porque nosotros por el hecho de ser humanos, por el hecho de de ser quien somos, eh, de, por el hecho de respirar, hacemos parte de la madre tierra, por el hecho de, de respirar, compartimos el viento, compartimos el agua, por solo el hecho de hacer esas acciones, nosotros somos hermanos de sangre, y de esta forma, eh, de, de acá, desde el territorio, los quiero invitar a ese buen vivir, a ese mejor vivir eh, como personas, como seres humanos, como indígenas, como nosotros nos identifiquemos, eh, invitarlos a, a una mejor vida, a vivir una vida buena en relación con la madre tierra, con la madre naturaleza, que son, nosotros todos somos hermanos. Y por último, despedirme con una frase en nuestro idioma que es suma causai, suma yuyai, que es pensar bonito para vivir bien. Gracias. Thank you. Um, if we can all share screens and say our final farewell that this is not the last and only time that we will see each other. Uh, thank you everyone to the attendees for your presence today. And uh, we look forward to having ongoing conversations on what we've discussed so far. This will be, take care. Take care everyone. Gracias a todos. Nos inspira y estamos orgullosos. Gracias. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Good night. <laughs>